Here are 31 healthy habits or cheat codes, if you will, that I know now at 31 that I would tell my 21 year old self if I could go back in time. <laughs> Number one, no fasted workouts, at least for women. You might've heard that working out on an empty stomach is gonna make you burn more fat because if your body does not have any energy in the form of food in its system yet, it has to tap into the energy sources that it's stored, which is our fat storage. But if you do this, you're gonna spike your cortisol levels. Cortisol is our body's stress hormone. It's naturally high in the morning. It's naturally high when we don't eat and it's naturally high or not so naturally high when we work out. And when we combine being hungry and working out, putting extra stress in our body, it's gonna raise our cortisol levels to an unhealthy extent. And that is most likely gonna mess up your hormones. So what I do now, because I still like my morning workouts, I have a protein shake with at least 15 grams of protein plus a little bit of carbs, usually in the form of fruits, a banana, a date, a kiwi, whatever I feel like, or some crackers. Number two, speaking of protein, eat enough protein. If you're an active person, meaning that you work out on a regular basis, you should aim for one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Because first, protein is the stuff that all of our cells are to a large extent made of. Second, without eating enough protein, you can work out as much as you want, but you will not really see much results because your muscles do not have the protein, the building stuff to build the muscle cells. And third, protein keeps you full for longer, so it keeps you from overeating. Plus, the calories from protein are worth less than the calories from carbs, for example, because your body needs more energy burning the calories from protein. So you can actually eat more when you eat more protein than when you eat more carbs or fat. Number three, chew your food. If you chew your food, correctly and throughoutly, you help your gut a lot. And if you don't, you might get symptoms like bloating or stomach aches. And also you're a lot more likely to overeat because you eat so fast that your brain does not have enough time to realize that you're already full when you're already full, but it just keeps sending you hunger signals until you overeat and then you don't feel good afterwards. Number four, no coffee on an empty stomach, optimally about 90 minutes after waking up. This is because right after waking up, our cortisol levels, our stress hormone levels, naturally are the highest, meaning we are awake naturally. And first, if you put caffeine on top of that, you spike your cortisol levels to an unhealthy or unhealthy-ish level. And second, you waste the effect of that caffeine because you're already as awake as can be, but 90 minutes after waking up, your cortisol levels are going down, meaning adenosine, a chemical that makes us sleepy, starts building up, but you can block that adenosine by drinking caffeine, keeping you from getting sleepy. So this timing helps you to feel more awake while not messing with your body's natural rhythm. Number five, also think of veggies as a protein source. When I was younger, I did not know there's anything except for vitamins and micronutrients in vegetables. But when I started tracking my protein intake, I noticed that there can be a lot of protein in vegetables. For example, spinach has more protein per 100 calories than tofu and broccoli has more than beef. And yes, I say protein per 100 calories and not per 100 grams because I think that makes a lot more sense because I think you should focus on nutrient efficiency, especially if you're looking to up your protein intake, which you probably should be doing because most people are not hitting their one gram of pound of body weight every day. It makes a lot more sense to focus on the protein content per calories and not per gram. Because for example, they say that in nuts there is a lot of protein, which is true-ish if you look at the protein content per gram or 100 grams, but not if you look at the calories. And yes, the calorie counting thing is a bit not as easy as just counting the calories together, but still nutrient efficiency is the best way to go in my opinion. I link a PDF down below where I put together the most important protein sources and rank them according to their protein content per 100 calories. I think this is a really cool cheat sheet to make it easier for you to up your protein intake without overeating in terms of calorie. And once again, because I'm saying protein all the time, I'm sorry, I'm trying to say protein. You guys keep mocking me of that, but I'm still learning and improving my English pronunciation. Number seven, take food breaks. I used to snack all the time until I learned that that is not good for our body. Our gut needs a break sometimes. Also during the day, but most importantly, during the night because they're already typically we don't eat for at least eight hours unless you're one of the people who get up in the middle of the night and go to the fridge which you should not do you typically don't eat for at least eight hours which is already pretty good but it's even better or almost necessary to give your gut a longer break for around 
12 hours, which can also be referred to as intermittent fasting, but intermittent fasting for women can be a bit not too good sometimes if you do it for too long. So aiming for a break of 12 to 14 hours is a good way to go. First, it helps your gut, it helps your body to take a break and to focus on other things. And second, this can help a lot with fighting inflammation in your body. Number eight, buy frozen fruits and vegetables. First, they're often a lot cheaper. Second, they often have a lot more nutrients in them than the fruits and vegetables that sit in the supermarket for days. And third, it's a lot more comfortable because you don't have to cut the vegetables, for example. You can just put them in your pot, which is good if you're a lazy cook like me. Number nine, sleep enough. It does not make sense if you have to get up after five hour nights of sleep just to get your workout in because your workout is gonna suck and sleep is the most important next to nutrition the most important thing that your body needs for regeneration both physically and mentally and it also helps with fat loss because if you're sleep deprived you might have noticed that you want to eat a lot more in general but especially a lot more sweet and fatty stuff because your body is trying to get that lack of energy that you know it didn't get from sleeping enough and fill that lack or that hole of energy with high caloric food. Number 10, consistent bedtime and waking times. And I know this sucks, at least if you're someone like me who likes to, you know, do stuff in the evenings, but this is gonna help you so much to sleep better and to feel more awake during the day. And at some point you won't even need an alarm clock to wake up, which I think is reason enough. And I'm not saying that I do this all the time, but I try to keep it as consistent as possible. Number 11, get sunlight in the morning without sunglasses. This is also a tip that I got from our beloved Andrew Huberman. When you go outside in the morning and expose your eyes to sunlight without sunglasses, your eyes can absorb that sunlight and send signals to your body to realize that now it's time to be awake. And it also sends your body the signals that about 14 hours after that, it needs to be sleepy again. So it also helps you to fall asleep better at night. Number 12, no coffee after 2 p.m. tops even better noon. And that is because our body needs about 10 hours, yes, 10 hours for one cup of coffee to get rid of all that caffeine from that one cup of coffee. And while I know that there are some people who say that I can sleep with an espresso at night, yes, you can sleep, but your sleep is gonna be worse. Science says so. Your sleep is gonna improve if you stop drinking afternoon coffees. I know this sucks, but if you just love the taste of coffee, switch to decaf. Number 13, in stressful phases, switch from coffee to matcha. Matcha has caffeine in it, aka it makes you awake, but in contrast to coffee, it doesn't make you jittery and, you know, a little bit anxious, but the L-theanine in that matcha makes you awake, but relaxed at the same time. Number 14, always combine carbs with protein and or fat. No matter how good the carb is, combining it with fat and protein helps your body to not experience a blood sugar spike because carbs are very easy energy, meaning the energy goes into our blood very quickly. We can slow that down a bit by combining the carbs with fat and protein and we want that because if our blood sugar levels increase very quickly they also drop very quickly right after that spike and if it drops we get tired and cranky and even more hungry than we were before this is especially the case for sweet stuff which is also the reason why desserts traditionally are consumed after a meal that contain a lot of fat and protein. But if you do not have any fat or protein at hand, have a shot of apple cider vinegar. If you have a little bit of apple cider vinegar or actually any type of vinegar, but apple cider is best, before you have something sweet, that blood sugar spike is a lot calmer. Number 16, eat fermented foods every day. Fermented foods are heaven for the bacteria in our gut. And when our gut is heavy, not heavy, happy, the rest of our body tends to be happier too, both our body and our mind. Because research shows that our whole system is connected to our gut health. And that can be yogurt or sauerkraut or kimchi or miso or tempeh, whatever you like. Number 17, after waking up, have a big glass of water. I know this is probably not new, but it's so important to rehydrate your body after a full night of not drinking or drinking very little. This is good for your gut, for your skin and for a clearer mind. Number 18, have some salt with your morning water. Sounds gross and also maybe a bit counterintuitive if you've heard that salt is bad. This is not necessarily the case though. To some extent, there is some good stuff in salt. This is why, you know, it even exists in our food and stuff. And when you add some salt to your morning water, you help your body remineralize with the electrolyte sodium, which we do need, just not too much of it. If 
you're healthy. If you're not, or if you're unsure if you should actually increase your sodium by a little bit in the morning, talk to a doctor. But if you're healthy, this can really help with being more alert and also with stabilizing our blood sugar levels. Number 19, your body and especially your brain needs carbs. Carbs are not inherently bad. Yes, protein and fat is more important for survival. Carbs are not actually necessary for survival, but our brain uses up a lot of carbohydrates every day. So if you want to do a low carb diet, do it if it feels right, but try to not do it for too long. Number 20, use sunscreen every day. Yes, every day, even if it's cloudy, your older self will thank you. I at 31 am noticing now who of my friends was in the sun a lot and was not using a lot of sunscreen and who was. It's just gonna make your skin healthier, let alone decrease the risk of skin cancer, obviously. Number 21, start a anti-inflammatory diet as soon as possible because the earlier you start, the sooner you will see the results or the less likely you will see the result of not doing it. Because if you eat inflammatory foods all the time, you are a lot more likely to develop diseases like autoimmune diseases or even things like allergies. And there are two most efficient ways to do this. First, eat less saturated fat, aka the fat in animals and stuff, and eat more healthy fats, aka unsaturated fats, such as avocado if you like that weird stuff, olive oil, nuts and seeds. And second, add more anti-inflammatory things into your diet like herbs and spices, especially cumin, turmeric and cinnamon. These are my absolute anti-inflammatory favorites. Number 22, walk more. Walking is one of the most underrated exercises, or probably the most underrated exercise there is. First, our bodies are made to walk. If you think back in time, what did our body do naturally? How did it get its exercise by walking or running away from a lion? But let's just stick with walking for now because it is so incredible for both our body and our mental health. So first, if you want to do something good for your body, calm type of movement, go for a walk. But also if you want to do something for your mind, for example, because you feel stressed out or you have a problem that you cannot find a solution for, or you can't think of another video idea for your next YouTube video, when in doubt, go for a walk and if possible, do not put any AirPods in your ears. Listen to no podcast, no music maybe even, because in that quietness while moving lies a lot of insight, if you want to say that, if that's even the correct way of English. But you know what I'm saying. Or even better, leave your phone at home. 23. Mind the caffeine in cacao. I did not know when I was younger that there is a solid amount of caffeine in cacao, meaning if you eat chocolate, especially dark chocolate, which is very healthy, yes, but if you eat a lot of dark chocolate in the evening, it's gonna keep you from sleeping well as well. But that also means that during the day, when you are feeling a bit low and could use some energy, but don't wanna have a coffee because it's already in the afternoon, maybe have a piece of dark chocolate. The darker, the better. Number 24, don't stare at a screen all day, every day. I have noticed such a decrease in my vision over the last couple of years. First, when I started working full time, and then especially when I also started to spend my evenings and my weekends, not all of them, but a lot of them on my laptop as well, editing videos because I was just staring at that screen and being very concentrated and not looking up because I wanted to get it done. And I wanted to help myself by getting those, one of these blue light glasses, but the optician, you know, the, the eye pro told me that that's not gonna help with that. But instead what I should do is first think of my eye as a muzzle and second train that muzzle to look further away again. Because when you look at your screen all the time, whether that's your phone or your laptop, you train your eyes to only look at a short distance. So of course it forgets to look, you know, at something farther away. So he told me a little rule to every 20 minutes, look at something about 20 feet away or six meter ish. I do 20 meters to be honest, but you know, just something far away for about 20 seconds. Number 25, breathe deeply. Breathing in and breathing out deeply has an incredible effect on our mind. When stressed, when angry, when not knowing what to do next, when in doubt, take a deep breath in, hold it for a second, and let it out and notice what it does to you. Number 26, food is fuel, mainly body fuel, but also mental fuel, meaning food is also there to be enjoyed and not only to provide your body with nutrients. However, always be careful, mindful when you're eating for joy, because eating for joy is healthy, but emotional eating can get unhealthy pretty quickly. So whenever you notice that you tend to eat when you're unhappy, when you're sad, when you're lonely, try to hold on for a second and first try to find another way 
to help you with your feelings, to keep your relationship to food as healthy as possible. Number 27, sleep in darkness and in quietness. This is just gonna increase your sleep quality immensely. Number 28, focus on body composition, not on volume. Meaning, focus on building muscle and losing fat, not losing weight overall because weight doesn't tell you much first this is healthy a lean body with a lot of muscles and not much fat tends to be healthier second a good body composition makes you look good because you look lean and you don't want to you know just be skinny but skinny fat third if you have more muscles and less fat you look skinnier because muscle 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 tissue is more dense aka more smaller than fat tissue so a pound of muscle for example is smaller than a pound of fat. And also, if you have more muscles, your body burns more calories even if it's not doing anything. This is also known as the basic metabolic rate and this increases the more muscles you have, meaning you can eat more without getting bigger. Number 29, nap. Only for 30 minutes tops and only before 3 p.m. ish. Even if it's just for five minutes, taking a short nap or just not even sleeping, just closing your eyes, this is also known as non-sleep deep rest, can give you such an energy boost without needing any caffeine or sugar. Number 30, always eat enough. It is okay to do a caloric deficit if you wanna lose weight, if you wanna lose fat, very important distinction here, but don't deprive your body of calories. Yes, also calories are important. This is important for first, keeping our body used to the calories, so not experiencing a yo-yo effect. Second, to feed or nurse. Third, to help our energy levels not get too low and to not mess up our hormones, both our stress hormones as well as our sexual hormones. Because for example, if you don't eat enough, for a long amount of time, you're gonna lose your period, which is something you don't want. Meaning, eat enough fat, enough protein, enough carbs, and other than that, eat the rainbow. Just try to eat as much, as many different foods as possible. Number 31, mind your hormones. Hormones regulate basically everything in our body, whether it's our mind or our body, how we look, how we feel, if we're happy, if we're depressed, if we're having a baby, if we're not, if we're in love, if we're not, you know, everything. And one hormone that is incredibly powerful and has an effect on our whole system is cortisol or stress hormone. If we're stressed out all, all the time, which many of us are way too much, our cortisol levels are going to be way too high and that's going to affect our whole mental and physical health. So I urge you to not repeat my mistakes and to try to not stress yourself out more than necessary or at all if possible. If you already are a bit too stressed out and feel like your cortisol levels are out of balance, have a look at my video here where I share how I'm balancing my cortisol levels back to a healthy level after being stressed out for way too long. Let me know which of these cheat codes hit you the hardest and I will see you in my next video.